And welcome back to Night to Christian. I'm your host, Frank. You know, Anthony, it's interesting. The perception <laughs> has become that I'm an angry guy because I get hot and passionate on the air when we do a show together. And um, I like to build a case that I'm not an angry guy. I'm really a, one of the most cheerful guys you ever meet. But I do have the fire of a Sicilian. You know, it's interesting. I used to get this thing back when I was in college, too, Anthony, where... Um, when I was in the classical liberal camp, I was in that conservative camp, and I'd be in these college classrooms, and I'd literally be um, a one-on-30 debate. And in the midst of that, everybody would have to tell me, calm down, Frank, calm down, Frank. Why are you yelling? Why are you yelling? I'm not yelling. I'm Sicilian. This is what we do. It really is. You know, with us Sicilians, you get the fire, you get the passion, but you also get the joy of life if you ever get to know us. But I understand, it. you know, when people don't know you, Right. You're on social media. and People are listening for the first time and they really don't know who the personality is behind the mic where where you're talking about the issues. And, and we live in that sort of that political discourse. where We all have to kind of, you know, make our arguments and make our points of views and, and try to be credible in that sense. Um, you know, the passion sometimes takes over. With us Sicilians. In fact, I, I like to laugh a lot about it, Anthony, where I say to people, if you ever come to one of my family functions and you sit at the table with all the, the Sicilian family that I have are all about to start, you know, pulling out the guns and shooting each other. I keep telling people, I've always laughed over this. I said, they're not yelling. They're not angry. They're not going to pull out knives, not going to pull out guns. They're Sicilians. They're actually having a good, casual conversation. Sicilians are just high, strong, Anthony. That's what they are. I mean, you've known me now for a few years now. At a personal level, do I come off angry to you? Well, what's interesting is we've gotten... Uh, some of these comments back to back now, and we've, we've gotten these comments in the past as well. And, uh, we've always kind of handled it on an individual basis, but, uh, yeah, I think culturally people just don't get it. Um, you know, my family is from Northern Italy. Uh, I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, I'm the first in line that really had the, uh, Italian watered down from 100%, even though, even though, uh, my family, uh, intermarried other Italian families there in Memphis, um, really up until, uh, my, my father's generation, but they still had all their old friends from all the old neighbor, from the old neighborhood. And, and, uh, a couple of them were Sicilian and, uh, you know, so I was around that. And I, I know how Sicilians are. Now, I, I didn't know if it was just those couple that I had met, if it was generally just that way. And after I met you, I was like, oh, well, <laughs> it's just generally that way. It's cultural. So I think, uh, gosh, the American culture is so interesting because it's such a hodgepodge. But generally, um, among other cultures they're much more quiet and they take they take tone I guess into account when it comes to uh, dealing with somebody that's maybe angry but um, yeah no I mean you can be having the most casual conversation in the world as a Sicilian and uh, it's all just loud you know and everybody's having a good time and as a child when I saw that interaction, between my parents and their Sicilian friends, like I, I got it. I was like, Oh, they're, they're having a good time. Cause eventually everybody'd start laughing, but <laughs> I didn't, I didn't realize that at the time. So, um, I, I think the, the one person they brought it up from an apologetic standpoint. And, um, you know, I went and listened to that cast again last night, Frank, the one you did on the, the review you did on Luther, which I thought I listened to it again. I thought it was absolutely excellent. And I was I know what part she's talking about. It was like in the middle of that cast. But see, I can tell you're just getting excited because you're revealing this information about something that's so important and you're trying to get people's attention. And, um, you know, if people listen past the excitement, uh, then they're going to find out some good stuff. Uh, but you know, 
I, I, I guess being Sicilian in our culture is a double-edged sword. In my home, I mean, my people are from northern Italy, but we were, <laughs> we were, we were kind of loud. Uh, not incredibly loud, but definitely louder than my wife's family. My wife's family is a uh, German Protestant background, you know, and uh, they're very, there's some Irish in there too. They're very soft spoken people. Um, but uh, so I can see how it would, it would look to them. And then um, the other side of my family, you know, they're, I guess, even though they're northern Italian, they, they're, yeah, they're a little bit loud. Yeah, yeah, they are. They are kind of loud, too. Now, they weren't nearly as loud as their Sicilian friends, but, boy, they could get loud, too. Uh, and then, I guess, like, in that enclave that my father lived in there, it was kind of Italian-Jewish area that he grew up in. Um, I, I grew up with his Jewish friends coming over, too, and they were just as loud as the Sicilians. So, I mean, it was just generally loud. So, like, when my interactions with you, I guess I've always understood it. You know, so <laughs> although when we first met, I was thinking like when we were talking casually and uh, we were sending messages back and forth when we were talking about starting up uh, this cast, Knights of Christendom, I really thought like I was thinking, is this is he just kind of like I thought we were casting, Frank. I literally thought we were casting until I got it through my head that, oh, yeah, he's Sicilian and this is what this is. But. No, I, I don't think even in that cast where you got that comment, you don't come off as angry. But maybe that's because I know what I'm listening to. Yeah, see, that's what's interesting. I, think. I know when we first started chatting, me and you on, you know, different apps, things like that, we started leaving messages for each other. And that's how we do these shows. We, uh, you know, when we're not recording a live show in a studio, things like that, we'll do that every once in a while. But when we don't have time for that, we'll record on these message services together. We'll put these shows up. That's why the quality... Uh, the audio sometimes varies here at the Nice of Christendom, though we are working on that. Uh, the thing about it is I remember those times, man, we get into some serious discussion, too, about politics and things like that and, and classical liberal civilization and, and even Protestantism. And I remember I'd be whooping it up, and I'm like, boy, I hope they understand me. I hope they under Because once I start talking fast, oftentimes I slur my words, and I have to tone it down. In fact, that's the one thing that, I've been working on too is toning it down when we do have our conversations, both at a professional and personal level. And I've done that recently pretty good. But every once in a while, when I got in this kick, like one of the last shows we did, uh, what was that last show we did? I forgot what, what show it was recently that we did. I, I just, I, I got into it. I, it just, when an idea hits me, when I finally see, okay, let me put it this way. There's lots of ideas that run through my head, right? I'm, I'm constantly thinking all day. You know, about issues of the world, things like that, when I'm not taking care of my personal affairs, of course. And there's moments I'll be driving a car and, I, and, and, and something finally clicks. In my mind, it comes together. Because I'm a slow thinker, right? And, and so ideas have to form over time in my head. But once they click and I see it finally, the vision, I get it in my head. It's where I get excited, right? And that's where the real passion comes out when I'm hitting something really for the first time. You know, when I've had these ideas that I kind of repeat over and over on a show, I, I kind of said them over and over. You, you'll see me just kind of repeat it. It's kind of go back to the well kind of a thing. But when these shows, we, these novel shows, like, oh, the one on we did the other day on conservatives and rationalism, I finally pinpointed a few critical ideas there and that's where I get excited about the issues right it's where I want to just go out there and just man you know especially because I do have my I'm not a big fan of the classical liberal mindset anymore right I believe it's overly destructive and so when these things come together the passion really comes out but you know it's funny because as a, I remember when me and my wife first got married on our honeymoon, one of the first movies we watched together as a married couple was that movie, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. And it's a great movie uh, in a lot of different ways. And one of the ways is is that Greeks, in many respects, at least how that movie portrays it, are a lot like Italians. They're loud. They eat all the time. 
and you get married and you make babies, right? That was always kind of what Italians were in many respects. Family was a central part of life. You got together, you cooked, you ate, you got a mother or grandmother in the kitchen that always cooks, it's always feeding you, and you and you have all these cousins because, you know, like I said to you before, I, I think I said to you at a personal level, when I was growing up, the concept of friends, you know, that we push sort of in the Americana kind of world because America has broken down the concept of family, or at least it, the concept of family never really formulated in America, in my opinion, but in my Italian world where it's all about family, right? My best friends were my cousins growing up, and it was always cousins. Now, we formulate some friends at times because we're all thrown in public schools, but, you know, when we got together as Italians, like that movie, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, you know, everybody gets together and everybody's loud and loud and loud and everybody's in each other's business. It is the way we are. It is a cultural thing. And so for me, oftentimes that translates into sort of a more professional level, if you want to call it that. And so when we're doing our shows and I see it, I, I find the fire, the passion of an idea, I do tend to get loud. And it's just who I am, really. It's not anger. I'm, I'm not coming down with, you know, brimstone and fire on anybody. I'm not condemning anybody. I, I never make really any ad hominem attacks against anybody, right? It's always a professional. Even when I go after guys like Beck or Hannity, it's really not one of a personal nature. It's about the ideas and how I believe the ideas are flawed. And when I see these things and I believe I got a strong point, right? I hit it and I hit it hard and that's who I am. It really is a cultural thing. Yeah, Frank, you know, that actually hits home for me pretty pretty hard. I, I missed 25, 30 years ago. I caught the tail end of that Italian culture, and it evaporated. It really evaporated. Yeah, my noni, she was always making gravy, you know, always making food. You could go over there whenever you wanted to, and... Uh, she, she moved next door to me for a while, but everything you say about Italian culture is so true. It is very much like my big fat Greek wedding. Very, very similar. Really very few things that are different at all. And I miss that. I miss that. And I, I, I think often to myself, I don't even, I don't even know how to get that back. You know, like, um, there's no way to, there's no way to, I'm starting my own you know, I've started my own family. I've got four boys. I'm, I'm 41 years old. And there's not much in an extended family to speak of. Uh, also, I had to lose, you know, I had to leave my hometown like we often do in this culture, just not really purely for economic reasons, but just I couldn't raise four boys in that particular city because it, it, the gang violence just got so bad. It's like, I can't do this. Um, I think that speaks to a lot of American cities. I think there's a lot of people that move away, not just for economic reasons, but just for reasons of safety, as we've seen the moral breakdown of civilization. It does, it makes me truly, truly sad, you know, to, to think back on those times, because I know I'm, I'm not going to get them back, you know, but at least I have the memories. Going over to uh, Noni's on Christmas and, whole family being there, Father Graham being there at the head of the table. You know, I never met my grandfather. He died before I was born. But Father Graham would be at the head of the table. He was always over there. And uh, the culture and the church and the family, it was all just one, Frank. And it's just, uh, it's all gone, man. It's all gone. As much as I love this country, and I do, I, uh, my, my video that I worked on is going to be out soon. Uh, it's just having so many problems with processing. It's been finished for two days, just the processing problem. I just keep having issues. I don't know if it's the frame rate or what, but <laughs> in any case, that's a side note. But um, it's uh, it's tough, man. It's tough to think back on this. And uh, I guess it, it, in some ways it makes sense that people aren't going to understand your passion and understand that you're not angry because – our culture is kind of the Italian culture is kind of evaporated into this amorphous, like it's not even a melting pot. That's the thing. I don't really even know what to call it, but the culture is just, it, it's, it's, it's dead. In fact, when you look, this is what it reminds me of. When you look at it, you go around to cemeteries, especially down here in Texas. And you look at all the Freemasonic tombs everywhere in the tombstones, 
it's dead. It's absolutely dead. Couple geometric shapes, maybe you know their little hand on there with their little handshake, whatever. Dead. No art. No beauty. Just void of any life or beauty. And um, it really speaks volumes, I think, to it parallels the destruction of our own cultures and families as we have as we have moved here. Um, in some ways, I just I don't know. It's it's tough. To, it's tough to take. But I'm starting over with my family. I've got my four boys, my wife. I'm very happy about that. And I hope to live another 30 years, maybe if I'm lucky and I get to see, see it all come to fruition again. I get to see the big family again. Yeah. I mean, those days are gone and I'm sure we're not the only culture that has experienced this breakdown of family breakdown of our ancestral roots and things like that, right? Because, I mean, that's the deal you have to cut in a pluralistic culture, or at least a secular pluralistic culture, because Sicily, in many ways, was pluralistic, right? But the culture and, and the faith consolidated that civilization, despite the many various uh, cultural backgrounds that gathered on that island for, you know, thousands of years, essentially, right? But when you come to America... America is not a, a country based on a sort of a, a tribe of people, right? A bloodline of sorts. It's it's based all on enlightenment principles, and you have to accommodate to those principles regardless of the family lineage. And so it fundamentally changes who you are. And because in America we have become uh, a nation that has separated the natural from the supernatural, and we made it purely about the naturalistic means of life, those those things in life, their materialism, Everybody that resides in America has to gravitate and tend toward that naturalism, right? Which is what? Money and prosperity and material goods, right? And we see even Italians and Polish and Germans and Irish gravitate toward that because if you're not making the money in America, you're falling behind financially, right? You know, as Catholics, we believe there's a balance between the natural and the supernatural, right? But in America, we totally have disconnected ourselves from the supernatural, leaving ourselves really in a state of, of naturalism in that sense. And with that has come down the breakdown of the family. And, and we've all seen in some capacity. I've seen it. Now, I'm a little bit different. I can't speak too openly about my family because I am was one of the first ones that left uh, California because of economic struggles. And, and that's another issue is the, the high finance of, of American culture and a usury system has played a big part in breaking down the family. It's not just mores here. That's why I say this thing, you know, you can blame the progressives for being as satanic as they are, but the right has played a role in this because they've always have supported the usury system, the big corporation system. Now the, the right says, well, you know, well, corporations are bad. Oh, really? Now you say that? Okay, fine. I'm, I'm, I'm happy you, you figured it out finally, but I know for my part, it, it, it's it's similar. You know, my kids are growing up away from extended family. Um, their upbringing is going to be completely different than mine, where I grew up with cousins. And I remember, you know, growing up with cousins. It was actually the joy of my life. It was fun, man. It was fun. And, and your cousins were the best friends you could ever have because they were family, right? And family takes care of each other. They watch after each other. But that's all broken down as the family has broken down. You know, you say, what is American culture? I don't know what American culture is. And, and I was born and raised in this country. It's like I said before, because I'm Italian, because my parents had a somewhat of an old world view of the world, I've seen two different worlds. I've seen an old world view from, as a Sicilian, as a Catholic, and I've seen, again, being born and raised in this country, and they are diametrically opposed ideologies. The, both those ideologies cannot coexist. And again, granted, you know, in a society where you're called to materialistic and, and naturalistic means in order to survive, because let's be honest, if you don't make the bank note payment on every month, you're going to lose your house, you're going to lose your car, you're going to lose everything, right? So it does become about the pursuit merely of the material in this world. And the family, in that sense, and the faith takes a back seat. You now have family members that are going into Protestant churches. Some have completely apostatized. You know, you talk about how the Catholic family got together, how it lived together, how it supported itself. You got together for the feast day or for the holidays, and you ate, you ate, you ate, and got loud and loud and loud. You know, we talk about that. And those were great times, the times I remember fondly. But those 
those days will never come back, Anthony. That's the sad part about it, precisely because America it, it, it doesn't accommodate that life anymore, right? Every one of us now becomes an individual. And so what is the first uh, sort of effect? I mean, look at, I'll, I'll give you an example, my generation versus my parents' generation, right? My parents immigrated here in 1964. That generation was still having children. My generation decided to start contracepting. Why? Because in order to accommodate the naturalistic sort of world in the material world, children become an economic burden. And through that economic burden, that means we're contracepting and having less children. So just the general size of the family begins to collapse in our generation. And in our children's generation, it will collapse even more, right? Because more and more people procrastinate in regards to having children. So the family itself, not only does it sort of diminish in regards to sheer size, but the value in fact, the value in children is diminished in that process too. That's why the close knit family is deteriorating. I was watching a documentary, I think on Amazon, I think it might have been a PBS thing, and it talked about Italians and the history of Italians in America, the Italian experience. And, you know, they talked about when Italians first got off the boats in America. They worked hard. They, they were looking for opportunity. You know, in Sicily, it was a difficult economy over there. But they came here and they pulled themselves up by their bootstraps, sort of that American work ethic. If you want to call it that, I, I, I don't like that American work ethic kind of thing. Consider we Catholics built the entire world. That's more of a puritanical Protestant uh, concoction. But but the point is, Italians came here to work. But in that process, getting caught up in the purely naturalistic where religion takes a back seat, family takes a back seat, one of the things that really affected the Catholic family, according to this documentary, and, and I've lived it, is the fact that, you know, one time the Catholic family, as a symbolic measure, I guess, used to sit down at the family table together on Sundays. They all got together, the family, every Sunday when they first got here, first generation, maybe second generation. By the time you got to the third and fourth generation, you don't get together at the dinner table anymore as Italians. You simply, that, that idea begins to evaporate. People begin to move around, migrate around, to pursue the money, the money, the money, uh, the material world, right? Or you, you begin to lose the faith. You know, how many times has I said on this show? Again, you know, once those immigrants got here, Anthony, right? Uh, you know, within two, three generations, what happens? First goes the language, then goes the culture, then goes the faith. With the faith dies the family. Why? Because Catholicism is a familial system of governance. God the Father is a family. He's Father, He's Son, He's Holy Spirit, and He gave us, you know, His mother at the foot of the cross. The saints are all of our brothers and sisters in the faith. That's how Italian culture was built through the concepts and the ideas of Christ the King and the Holy Family of God, the Blessed Holy Trinity. It's why we tre we stress the Trinity. We stress the family. Unlike the Protestants, and America being a Protestant nation, um, emphasize more on the individualistic nature of Christianity, right? It's me and Jesus and nobody else. That perfectly mimics what we've done here with these individualistic rights. I'm an individual. I have to express myself. Kiss my rear end. I'm an American. That's the attitude Americans have. And there's been no loyalty to family. There's been no loyalty to true religion and true faith. Only an abstract Jesus, maybe, if you want to call it that. An abstract, again, deist God that simply is here to guide us in the material world to make sure we make enough money. And in that spirit, Anthony, the family dies. It dies. Frank, the way you summarized that is spot on. The way it was just analyzed and synthesized for everybody. Uh, and I don't see how they can deny it. Because I think it's been a lived experience among many people in the West at this point in history. I know that, you know, as a child, you see the divorces happening around you within the family. You know, not, not my family, uh, my immediate family, but you see it happening around you. And you just, you know, something's not quite right. You know, something's off there. And then also... Uh, experiencing it in family and then extended family again after you uh, marry into a family. And uh, that's interesting because you develop very strong bonds uh, within the extended family. And then that's all broken down. So it's not just the marriage and that, that relationship that breaks down, but all of the relationships break down at that point. Uh, it's really a, a seismic event. And, um, I know for my part, when I was young 
and uh, we'd be going to Christmas dinner and stuff, and, you know, we would have uh, – new families showing up with other kids and stuff. It, it was, it was very awkward. It was very awkward. I had a very weird feeling about it. Like I didn't really quite know what to think. Uh, of course I was very, very nice. And it's, and it's not <laughs> obviously not the children's fault, but I think, I think all children naturally feel that way. Cause it's kind of like, Oh, hi, you know, who are you? <laughs> it's, it's almost as if the adults don't even consider the, uh, the emotional uh, relationships that children form and, and the response that they're going to have uh, and to some degree when, when this kind of thing happens. Um, and I think, again, that goes back to the idea of the individual, right? The individual. They, they, don't think of a, they don't think of family as family among husband and wife even. Um, it's something that can be easily tossed off, you know, the shackles of marriage. <laughs> And children are very perceptive. They see this, and, and we've had generation upon gener- generation damaged by this. And, and it's not something anybody wants to speak about or talk about. We don't want that out in the open. We don't want to have that conversation. That's a painful, uncomfortable conversation that nobody wants to have. And this is precisely the reason I think that so many people uh, leave the Catholic Church or just flat out ignore it and stay and keep going to communion, even though they know precisely what the church teaches. Um, it's 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 really incredible. It's incredible to see the uh, disregard for family in the, in this culture, and I think I think that's the problem. Uh, you know, there's some remnant of it, obviously, uh, even among. Protestant sects, there is some remnant of it, but it's it, it's on a fast, fast decline. Uh, my, my one hope is, as always, is that Jesus Christ raises up great saints for our times that are not uh, they're not afraid to speak about these things. They're not afraid to uh, call on the Lord and say, "Look, you guys, you, you know, you need to repent." You need to repent. You need to come home to Rome. You need to come home to the the church that Jesus Christ founded because he is God. And those commandments, you know, we don't, as Americans, we don't want to be commanded what to do. You know, don't tell me what to do, like you say, Frank. (laughs) But uh, you know what? Think about it this way. Those are God's laws of love. If you truly love, you truly pick up your cross. And it's not easy. It's not easy to keep God's commandments. That's the whole point. I mean, what do you, temptation, it's a real thing. And nobody wants to talk about temptation anymore either. And oh, there's, there's really no such thing as sin. Okay. Look at the misery man has created around him by ignoring these things in the West. Well, Anthony, I, I want to thank you for joining me on this podcast. I just wanted to address, um, you know, some of the issues of, of uh, who I am and why I, I do would say the things that I say on our show and the fact that I'm, I get kind of loud sometimes. I know for some people that's a little uh, of a put off, but rest assured, you know, um, I've lived the Italian experience, the immigrant Italian Sicilian experience here in America in many ways. And, and really all of my family can attest to that. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I was forced to flee my hometown in L.A. where I was born and raised for greener pastures as the Marxist state of California became much more difficult for people to survive. And, and the thing that I miss most in my life, and I mean the thing I miss most in my life, is family. I got a big um, I got a big trip coming up here soon where I'm going to back east to visit my family in Boston. And it's I am super excited about it, you know, get in touch with my dad's side. Um, I haven't seen them in many, many decades, let's put it that way. And uh, we've kept in touch over the years. And uh, there's something about family as an Italian that oftentimes I think in our everyday to day lives, we lose, right? You know, family is family. And in the midst of these things, there's always arguments and fights and jealousies and envies and things like that. And when you live with each other, uh, uh, you know, in a close proximity, you take the little things for granted, right? It's like that movie, again, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. They kind of yelled at each other, they fought, but they loved each other in the end. That's that's what families do, right? We get in each other's businesses, we analyze each other. It's not because 
you know, we want to critique because we think we're better, but because, you know, fans get each other business because they love each other. We, we don't want anybody to go astray. We watch after each other. See, and, and that's the importance of the familial system in many respects that you do watch after each other. You do take care of each other because in the individualistic world where nobody's watching after you, the temptations of the world, you know, it's funny, Anthony, because, uh, you know, one of the things that Rush Limbaugh used to make fun of and a lot of classical liberals make fun of is the idea of how in the Italian community, the, the boys, uh, they stay at home and live with their parents until they get married, right? So, so if you put off marriage like everybody has in this civilization for various reasons, uh, economics being one of those, because the American way of life has forced people into a usury system that forces people to go to schooling and education, take out debt perpetually. It, it's made the institution of marriage uh, more difficult to attain, obviously. And in that process, that's also affected uh, the family and brought the destruction of the family. But the point I'm making here is, is the reason why young men live with their parents is because, guess what? Just because you turn 18, this arbitrary number that somehow our civilization picked, doesn't mean you're ready for the world and to deal with all the temptations that the world is going to throw at you. When you live with your parents until you get married, that's a form of protection against the sins and the vices of the world. But in a society like America it doesn't acknowledge sin, doesn't acknowledge vice anymore, well, what's there to protect children from? Go out there. Go out into the world. Go out and experiment with drugs, sex, and rock and roll, so to speak. I mean, look at the American experience now that how we force everybody or at least strongly encourage everybody to go to college. What's the college experience in America, right? You got to go out and get an education uh, in order to make the money, the money, the money. But in that process, in the American college experience, you, you get to play with drugs, right? You get to sexually experiment. You get to contracept. You get to drink. You get to party. You, you know, all the vices of the world. And it's become really this rite of passage in America, right? The kids are going to go to college and go party and do all this stuff. And somehow, after it's all said and done, Right? They're going to go out and get a job and make the money and settle down. Well, those are disorders that we're seeing now in the greater scheme of things um, that people are not getting over. They're not getting over. And it's having a cultural effect. Again, the breakdown of the family. It's been perpetuated in America really since the founding. And it's been perpetuated by denying the one true triune God and Holy Mother Church, which were the original families by which civilization was governed under. You break away from the concept of the familial system, you destroy the family. That's what we've done in America. And now it's affecting even Catholic civilization, Catholic cultures and Catholic people. Right? It's... There's so much that has been lost in this transition from the old world to the new world. But I think it's all coming to a hedge now, right? It's, um, the chickens are coming home to roost as nobody can make heads or tail of the civilization. And even the classical liberals who didn't go so far as their progressive siblings to really dump on sort of tradition and to that ex extent see the problems that modernity has brought, see the problems that liberalism has brought. They just can't pinpoint the fact that it was their ideas, their fallible ideas, particularly of abandoning the faith in the first place, and the old world, which really throughout history experienced all these things that we're going through now, right? And it learned, and it adapted, and it adjusted, and the church was there to implement it, sort of the values through, because it was the more arbitrary truth. But in a nation like America, where there is no more more arbitrary truth, you know, it all collapses. And that's what makes it all tough here. And, and it's affected the Catholic family, the Italian family. It's affected everybody at this point in history. So, you know, you know, we'll continue to persist, uh, do the best we can, hope for restoration, because ultimately that's what it's going to take, right? It's, it's going to be an intercession from the heavens above, because the trajectory the West is on right now, uh, the destruction of the family, the destruction of culture or lack of culture in America. It, it, it's really on a downward spiral now, and everybody's being affected by that. Um, I can tell you right now, man, um, I've been gone so long from family now that it's something that I would never take for granted ever again, how important family is. You know, it's just, it's been my experience, man, you know. You know, here I am, I'm, I'm this, you know, sort of very traditionalist Catholic in the middle of Mormonville, Utah at this point in my life. And 
Um, my beliefs are, are, are different. I keep to myself for the most part. Don't get me wrong. It's a nice place to live. It's a nice place to raise a family in the sense that it's economically viable. It's not a, it's not a place where, you know, it demands the money, the money, the money. Cause that, that I'm telling you right now, the American economy and the constructs of the American usury system has played a big part in destroying a family. That's why I keep saying to you, it's not just the left. The left is not the problem. I mean, it is the problem, but not only the left. The right has never made this association again because it attributes sort of the free market capitalist system uh, as, as, as the gold standard, almost as a gospel of sorts. Uh, but but they haven't seen the damage that is done in a wider scale, right? Because prosperity at the end of the day is is the gold standard in America. As long as we're achieving prosperity, that is what fulfills the promise of this abstract God of religious liberty that was impugned really at the, since the beginning of the country. Again, at the expense of true religion. But in that process, we've seen the culture and the family deteriorate, right? And so it's convenient for the right to say, well, it's the progressives. It's our progressive siblings. It's the left. They're the problem. They've destroyed our culture. They brought on abortion. They brought on this. Fair enough. There's a lot of truth to that. But what the right has never acknowledged is their economic policies and their willingness or unwillingness to acknowledge eternal truth, divine truth, the, the, the 2000 year analogy of the faith for the revolution that they started in many respects has been a grand culprit. And now families all across the country, all across this nation, really all across the West now, have been destroyed. Um, Anthony, my friend, this has been a great conversation. I want to thank you for coming to my defense, saying that I'm not an angry guy. I'm really not. I'm really not. If you know me in a personal level, ladies and gentlemen, I'm one of the happiest guys you'll ever meet, man. I really am. I'd love to meet you all. I'd love to talk to you all anytime. So uh, final thoughts, Anthony. Well, I guess my final thoughts are just that, it seems that inevitably the conversation always goes this way. Uh, but I think what I've realized is is why we do what we do here at the Knights of Christendom. The reason we're always hard on the classical liberals is because we do care about our families. We care about our extended families. And we see how the, the, destruction, the destruction of the families that affected many of us very personally, uh, those of us that value the uh, interpersonal relationships uh, with people around us and we see people made in the image and likeness of God and we want to see him glorified by loving our neighbor, by truly loving our neighbor and following, truly following uh, the commandments, not paying them lip service, not following an abstract God of liberty, but truly following the God of love where his law of love is strictly defined in the Roman Catholic Church. And I know a lot of people are going to say, hey, don't put that word Roman in front of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Very well said, my friend. I think we often touch on um, certain central issues here um, on Knights of Christendom. Family, the faith being, of course, at the center of those. And I think that's the struggles that many of us have. And, you know, this conversation has entailed that reminded me Again, not only how much I miss family, and, but but even within that context, as family has broken down for those that still are close to family, how everybody's become generally much more narcissistic. And I speak for myself just as much as anybody else, because it's like I said before, you know, this apostasy, the temptations of the world, the temptations of vice that have all been legalized now and is thrown in our face. Uh, the, these evil acts are eventually going to consume everybody, right, because of our fallen nature. You know, you know, I know a lot of times non-traditionalists or non-Catholics or non-Christians like to play the hypocrisy game. It's not a hypocrisy. It's never been a hypocrisy. We all have fallen nature. We all will succumb to a certain amount of temptation if we don't protect ourselves at some point. And that's what we're doing here at KLC. We're trying to protect people from a civilization that really titillates all of our most inner passions and tries to distort them and disorder them in a way where we all eventually fall and collapse to where the church and the life of the family become irrelevant in our lives. This is the fight we're going to put up. You're going to hear lots of the same ideas, but we also have a very 
wide sort of vocabulary of sorts, uh, a, a broad definition of different ideas that we will always bring up here. And yeah, there's going to be moments of time, guys, I'm going to light it up. I'm going to, I'm going to just yell the rooftops off because that's who I am. I'm Sicilian. It's my nature. It's who I've always been. I just, you know, listen, in the American sense, I just want to be true to myself, right? I'm a guy that just swings for the fences when I got these ideas that are just, you know, in me that I got to get out and, and I'll get them out. But at the same time, I do take the discussion, the debate, and it, it, all seriously, I really do. And in that sense, um, you know, uh, I'm going to leave it there. You know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, the immigrant experience uh, in America, it's been interesting. There's been some good. There's been some bad. I think there's lots of ideas we could talk about. But generally, we see a world that's off kilter. And in that respect, it's it's affecting all of us adversely, whether we're natives, whether we're immigrants, whether we're second or third generation. You know, this is affecting all of us. And the principles that we talk about here at KOC, they're not just principles for Catholics, not just principles for Italians or even traditionals. They're principles for all of mankind. Why? Because the church was given to all of mankind. It was given to the world. And those are the values that Christ left us for all of humanity. It's up to us whether you want to choose to accept them or reject them. We've been rejecting the principles of the church and Christ our King, the most blessed Trinity now, for at least 500 years, and look where the world has gone, all right? Set aside all your claims of prosperity and technology, okay? That was always being, you know, churned within Catholic culture as well, too. What you have to look at is the state of culture, the state of the family, and really even the state of the individual, as we now have more people broken in a sort of a personal way than we've ever seen before. It's amazing how many individuals uh, need to take drugs now simply to cope with everyday life. New diseases of mental disorders that are being discovered now on a daily basis within modernity and and yet, in the familial system of the Catholic family, they overcame great tragedies and still stayed somewhat mentally healthy. Quite amazing times we're living in. This is Frank. I want to thank my friend Anthony for joining me. Signing off for the Knights of Christendom. Good night, everybody.